Well, pressure on the mail mounted still further when the Jewish Chronicle accused the paper of anti-Semitism over the attack on Ed Miliband's father. So where do we go from here? A short time ago, I spoke to the former Labour leader, Lord Kinnock, and to the journalist, Toby Young. Do you go with the Jewish Chronicle, who say this is actually anti-Semitic? I think there might be something in it. I'll tell you why. Because a lot of the references going back over these years uh, to Ed's appearance, to uh, his voice, to the way in which he deports itself, it's very difficult to escape the idea that in some cases, certainly not in all cases, in some cases, there is a subtext. Now, I haven't read the Jewish Chronicle piece. I've only read Jonathan Friedland's tweets on it, and I say that if there is anything in that, it's time it was wrung out of any attitudes. Anti-Semitic? Uh, to say that uh, the Mail has an anti-Semitic agenda is completely absurd. I mean, until right. recently... Well, well, it's the Jewish Chronicle, Chronicle that's running the Jewish Chronicle's big absurd. Um, uh, you know, uh, until recently, the Mail employed Melanie Phillips, uh, probably Israel's most staunch defender in the national media. That still and to wouldn't claim... stop them running an anti-Semitic... Uh... Well, Jeffrey Levy wrote it. Um, I, I think uh, that to claim, as Lord Kinnock does, that there was no element of political calculation here is patently absurd. Even in the letter, the very public letter that Ed Miliband wrote to Lord Rothermere earlier today, he couldn't help but shoehorn in a line about the rising cost of living. Now, you know, of but course he's exploiting truth. this and he's extracting every last drop of political you know capital he can well. out of it. Fair you know play to him, well. that's what a leader of the opposition quote does. If you quote a lot, because what Ed said in that letter was, it's understandable, which this certain effect, it's understandable if people are more concerned about the rising cost of living than they are in this dispute between us. That's the truth. But it still meant that when somebody invaded his uncle's memorial service yesterday on the 29th floor of a hospital specifically to try and gather some kind of additional story on the Miliband family, it is absolutely natural oh, that Ed should ask for that inquiry and in the course of it refer to the fact that they country has other preoccupations, but to him, it is vital that he gets a proper answer and response from Rothermere. As I say, I'm not defending the Mail on Sunday's invasion of that particular ceremony. The editor of the Mail on Sunday is not defending it. The journalist in question has been suspended. That was outrageous. And what you were doing, if I may say so, Mr Young, is treating the most excessive example of the culture of the male newspapers and saying there's been an apology, there is a suspension, that's what we've got to deal with, it's indefensible, and choosing to treat very superficially the original offence, which was outrageous, well, repulsive. Well, hang on a second. Um, uh, Ed Miliband himself introduced his father into the political conversation. He's talked about his father many times. Mehdi Hassan, Ed's official, I think official biographer, said that in order to find out about Ed, you needed to look at one of his greatest influences, who is his father. You can now, say the I, same I think, thing I think, about my of course, dad. I don't, I think, of course, I don't think you can conclude that because his father um, uh, didn't believe in parliamentary democracy, Ed doesn't either. That's patently absurd. But I think people read this article uh, and took it with a large dose of salt. I mean, if you, you're sort of complaining that this poisonous sort of uh, polluting article can effectively have a really negative Cumulative. impact on the way the public perceives a politician. It's done, it's, done, it's done Ed Miliband nothing but good. But it's a political they, gift it, that keeps you, on giving you, to the Leader of the Opposition. That that's what they thought last Friday night when they were deciding to publish the article, ah, yum yum, if we do something really excessive like this, it'll humanise and support uh, and improve the general standing of Ed Miliband. Well, of course, let, it wasn't. Let, it was let, me, let, let, me, let, me, let me put this in context. Um, I've often heard it said in the past that the reason you didn't win uh, the general election in 92 was because the right-wing press was so ranged against you. Uh, but Tim Montgomery in The Times uh, had an article last week saying that if 2,500 people had voted another way in 92, you would have won and John Major wouldn't have done. So really, how much impact on the outcome of general elections do articles like this have? Well, it was the Sun that claimed that they won it. Uh, and uh, Even it was not McKenzie Lord, admits that was and, and it was Lord McAlpine who offered the original analysis that said that the tabloids had won it for the Tories. I have never said that. I have said that the cumulative effect of their attacks on me uh, was uh, 
at the margin, sufficient margin, noticeable. But this piece and the series of articles coming after it in the Daily Mail is directly intended to misrepresent Ed by infamously uh, reporting, misreporting his father's motives and his conduct. Well, let, let, me, let me ask you then, finally and briefly, um, how is the line to be drawn under this? Are you talking about resignations from the mail? Uh, that's entirely up to Mr. Dacre and his uh, employer, who, as an, I understand, has just extended his contract. Consequences? Well, um, my fear is that the consequences will be that the Privy Council give the thumbs up to the more draconian of the two royal charters next week, and that, in turn, will lead to attempts by Miliband and others to really muzzle the press. Neil Kinnock, Toby Young, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.